Got a new look this morning. If, wow, Betsy, I'm impressed. Um, Clark Kent, I don't know who that is, Santa. Um, if you're here visiting, you caught us. I think we started in June, so literally right in the middle of a year-long series that we've been doing at E3. And the crazy thought of talking about the same very broad thought for a whole year is something that wasn't just like, oh, I think that sounds like a great idea. We won't have to design any more graphics, though Betsy took it upon herself to do that. Um, but really the heart behind it, the heart behind having a series that we focused on for a whole year is to really watch ourselves transform because it's so easy to get caught in just the cycles of life. A good month at work, a bad month at work, uh, things are going good at home, things are not going good at home. But we're hoping that as we discuss this on a weekly basis, coming together, the hero challenge, what does that mean? Becoming all that God's designed us to be. Because as you and I know, as the events that we've seen in the last few weeks and the events that we haven't heard about and the things that have been publicized and the things that haven't been publicized, we live in a hurting world. We live in a world that needs hope. And oftentimes our, our, um, maybe our reaction is to look at God and say, why don't, why don't you do something about it? But I know sometimes I'm scared to ask that question because I'm afraid he'll look back at me and say, why don't you do something about it? Because he empowered us. When he came and lived and died, he gave us a gift to be him on this earth, to literally uh, act on behalf of heaven and to bring hope and to bring joy. And so we've been focusing this entire year to watch that transformation take place in our lives so that when that time comes to close, we can see that truly we've changed and I can tell you from, for myself that that's actually happening. And I'm not bragging or putting a notch on my belt. I'm just saying that God's, I'm open to it, and I've been open to it this whole year, and God's actually changing me. And I'm so grateful for it because there's things in me that I've been dealing with that are, I'm seeing, wow, this feels good to kind of not be dealing with that anymore, or it feels good to be challenging myself in this way. So I know that this series has been beneficial for me, and I'm sure it has been for many of you, but to put our focus and attention on transform. But this morning, we're going to like laser in just for a couple minutes on um, something that I think is important for us to focus on this week. Because as Brad talked about this last week, just the chaos of, Chris, of this Christmas season. And I would say, and I think you'd probably agree, the chaos that our world is in. And it can be overwhelming. I think sometimes things stack up and stack up, but then things hit you in the face, and it's like, gosh, this, is a, this, this world needs Jesus. This world needs hope. This world is chaotic. And then there's, um, you know, there's us. Like, I, I know some people, and, and I've, I've actually been tempted to be like, I am going to be so glad when 2012 is over. Like, I'm just going to be happy to see this year go. Sayonara. I'm ready for a new one. And I don't know if any of you have ever had that same thought. You know, you're ready just to start over. But I got, I kind of, I, like I was thinking yesterday as I was driving to the post office, um, something I've been doing a lot lately, it's really fun, post office at Christmas, it's awesome. Um, when you have like 17 packages every single day, it's really great. People love you. Um, that's where Christmas cheer needs to go. <laughs> we should all carol to the post office tomorrow. Um, but anyway, I was driving and I was just thinking, you know, like I could probably think this year, ha you know, I'd be really glad to see this year end. Like, you know, just thinking of different things that we've gone through and things. And then I started to think, but I'm not. Like I'm not, part of me thinks in my head, hey, it would be, you know, if someone else walked this year with you, they might be like, gosh, I can't wait for a whole new year. And I'm thinking... It's weird, but I've, something has carried me through this whole year. And it's not so much that I want to get rid of this one. I want to stay right in the palm of his hand forever. In 2012, when 2013 hits us, and I just was thinking about the chaos and the hope that we have in Jesus, that he really is our prince of peace. And... So our world is chaotic, and sometimes our lives are chaotic, and sometimes our communities are chaotic. And my husband, he referenced something a few moments ago that I'm just going to share. Sorry, I didn't ask for permission, but I'm going to say it nice because it's true. So last night, you know, this season is chaotic, 
And last night we were having a family night. So we had all our kids together. We're all piled in the car. And it took us about, when you have, you know, four kids and you all are, everybody, one kid wants Red Robin every single time. Someone always says Jason's Deli. We're like deciding where to go. Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. Great time to figure out where you want to go. So we finally decide where we're headed and we're driving down the road. And all of a sudden, this car behind us starts acting ridiculous. Like, like coming right up on our bumper and do it just not try apparently we were going too slow for him i'm not sure but your pastor your, your man the man of god that the lord has called to lead you was driving and i kept reminding him this repeatedly as this happened because he being the father that he is and maybe because of the half italian nature because his dad's not doesn't have this side that i've seen but he starts to get a little excited about this guy riding our bumper and then the, the guy almost like pushes us into the other lane and then cars are honking at us and we're all covering our eyes it was a little bit intense so we came finally we got like out of that exact moment and then the car sped around us and we were both at the stoplight together so um I'm reminding him that all of his children are in the car watching him and I know that he's thinking all of my children are in the car. Like, how dare you do this? Like, act this way. Like, my kids are in the car. But the words that were going to probably come out of his mouth weren't remembering that his kids were in the car, if you know what I'm saying. So I, I'm just, like, encouraging him with the love of the Lord as a faithful wife would over and over. Brad, you're rolling down the window. And I could see this other car. It just didn't look like a good situation, guys. Like, not one you know, just didn't look good. So he's rolling down his window and the guy rolls down his window and the guy says a few things to us and, and he's, he's mustering up. What is he going to say? And I'm like, Oh Lord, please don't let him say what I know he wants to say. And he just says, he did cuss you out. And he goes <laughs> with the good pastor, father, man, oh God, that you're is right here. Shut your face. That's <laughs> I'm like, ooh, shut your face. That's awesome. And then we were not sure about that guy. He was getting a little carried away, so we drove away. But all of us were like, shut your face. That's what you got? Like, oh, man. So then we drive over to Cheesecake Factory, and, you know, I'm just reminded of the chaos of the Christmas. No parking spaces to be found. You get in line. There's a way, you know, everybody's waiting there's like someone buying millions of gift cards in line. It was just, just, you know, and all the humans are looking at this tiny screen. Have you ever seen that? Like when you're waiting for a meal, like they all have these tiny little screens and everybody's looking at them. <laughs> Nobody's talking to each other. It's just, just chaos. You know, this, this time of year can actually, our world is chaotic, but this time of year can be exceptionally chaotic. And, um, you would think that it's very different from the very first Christmas and that times have changed. But I want to know, like, really, have they really changed that much? I mean, yes, nobody back then was looking at one of these tiny screens, and, and they, their camels probably didn't speed off as fast. But I'm sure there was people exchanging words in the road. And I'm thinking about the first Christmas and uh, how chaotic it must have been. Because, first of all, you've got, like, the whole census thing. Everybody's coming from everywhere to go be counted. So people... Our, everyone in the world is on a road trip, okay? So basically, everyone's going back to their place of birth to be counted, and they don't get to take planes. They literally have to bring, like, I can't imagine packing for the road when you have to travel long distances. And, and, and you know, we love road trips in our family, but road trips on a camel, who knows? Like, I, I just, just wouldn't, doesn't seem peaceful to me. And then getting to a city where people aren't used to coming from out of town and there's no room for anyone to be there. And then on top of that, the whole fact that there's this girl that has to explain to her family and her betrothed, like, why she's suddenly pregnant, I'm pretty sure that didn't go over too well. Like, oh, an angel came to you, uh-huh, like, sure. So there's just the stress of the scandal of the story, and there's all of it, and I can feel just like the churning, you know what I'm talking about, the churning of a story that has nothing to do with, like, peace. But yet, but yet, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and this is the prophecies of when the Messiah would come. And they said, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful 
Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I personally like to add, just for flavor, the fresh Prince of Peace. So if you guys could bring that in with me, okay? I mean, he wasn't yelling to his cabbie, but he, he's the Prince of Peace, okay? That's just for anybody that cares. Um, but how can that be? How can the story and how can he be the Prince of Peace in a world that looked chaotic then, in a world that looks chaotic today, in a season that often feels so chaotic? How can he be the Prince of Peace if it doesn't feel peaceful? And I want to know that answer. And there have been times when I didn't have that answer. And this morning we're going to just talk about how he can be the Prince of Peace. And <clears throat> in Luke chapter 1, verse 26, um, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Elizabeth was not Queen Elizabeth, it was Elizabeth. <laughs> she ended up being the mother of John, John the Baptist, and her pregnancy came when she was like way past childbearing years. It was a miracle in and of itself. And so between her and Mary, there was lots of angel visits and lots of things happening. And um, Elizabeth's pregnant. And so then God sends an angel to Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village. I'm sorry. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you confused and disturbed. I mean, I'm not faulting her for that. Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. And he said in verse 30, don't be afraid, Mary. The angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him throne, the throne of his ancestor, David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And then later on in that chapter, Zechariah, who's married to Elizabeth, not the queen, um, the father of John the Baptist, he has a prophecy. His son is born, and in that moment, he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he says, in the midst of the end of his prophecy, he says, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death and guide us to the path of peace. And then as Mary, you know, comes and she's had her baby in, in the manger or however you want to know that it actually happened. I wasn't there. I don't know. Luke 2 verse 8 says this. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the, God's, of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by the sign. You will find the baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom, with whom God is pleased. That's the story. They go, they visit him, you have the little nativity scene. Uh, but in a chaotic time, one, one phrase that I feel like keeps going over, and I feel like this is the very answer to how we can have peace in the midst of chaos, was what the angels kept telling them to do, which was, don't be afraid. And fear is the exact opposite of peace. So in the midst of chaos, here's Mary. She's got this scandal. She's got a pregnancy. She's got a lot of stuff to explain to a lot of people. And not only that, like her life wasn't like a cakewalk after that. You know, first she has that whole beginning of how she has her son. And then he's born and he lives and, and people talk about him. And if there were paparazzi back then, he would be on the page of every one, first page of every one of them. There were people talking about him, calling him a wine bibber and a glutton and a friend of sinners. And her reputation isn't probably a pretty one. And then not on top of that, her son is falsely accused and hung in the most, um, most undignified way possible and has died. And then there's all of this stuff. So her life was never easy. And you know what? We were never promised that. In fact, Jesus said that in the world, there will be trouble. And if you look around today, he wasn't lying. There's trouble. In your checkbook, there might be some trouble. 
In your marriage, there might be some trouble. In your health, there might be some trouble. But he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So what he's asking in that very moment, don't be afraid. I got this. Don't be afraid. Trust me. So what this looks like, the chaos that you see in the middle of it, you're going to be okay. I've got you. I've got you. You know, yesterday we were at the grocery store, which I don't recommend to anybody this weekend. Um, apparently the news is from the cashiers that tomorrow is the busiest day of the whole year. So just a warning. But fries on 90th and Shea, not, I mean, I go there a lot. Like I get those special coupons. They tell me I'm a valued customer. They know my kids. They know which kind of sample they like, except for the sushi lady. She was really mean to Angelina yesterday. I wasn't happy about that. But we had to park far away. I've never had to park this far away in fries yesterday. It was ridiculous. And then there were no carts, like none, not in the parking lot. Every cart was in use in the entire store. And I had more than a few things to get, but we all carried baskets. I had my three children in tow and we're stacking things and carrying them. And, and there are people everywhere in every line, in every aisle, there are people. It must've been like Bethlehem. Maybe I don't know, but it was ridiculous. And so then we get to the front of the line finally, and Jackson hasn't had a nap and he's four. And he's in that phase where he doesn't want to take a nap. He tells me he's done with them, but I know that he needs one. But there's this, just this weird, he knows when he's five, he doesn't have to take him anymore. So we have this argument every day. But I want to stop taking naps. I know, but when you're five. Okay, but so anyway, we had a day without a nap, which was not a good day for him. And he starts having a meltdown in the checkout line. We've got our baskets. We've got people. We've got like, no, everybody's kind of like the driver behind us, just a little like on edge, like the churning is going on. And Jackson is in full blown, like, grabbing candy off the shelves. I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. And I'm like, I need a snack. And I said, and I kept saying from the very beginning, this is what caused the meltdown. I will take care of you, Jackson. Put that Snickers bar down. <laughs> I will take care of you. And I must have said it about 500 times. You're like, he's grabbing another thing. He had this little, like everything was horrible for him, but and he grabbed everything he could see and he's bringing it for, but I'm hungry. I need a snack. And I kept looking at him saying, I will take care of you, Jackson. I will take care of you. And then he kept trying to find his own way, grab another bag of chips off the shelf. And I'm just like, Jackson, look in my eyes. Works every time. Not really. What did I say? You said that you will take care of me. And will I take care of you? Yes. Put this away. We got in the car and he wanted to know how, like he wanted to know, well, what are you going to do to take care? Like, what are you going to give me? How is, how are you going to take care of me? How is this need going to be met? Because I need to know. And I didn't really have that answer right then, but I knew there would be something. I just needed him to shut his mouth, shut your face. Um, <laughs> that's our favorite line in our family now, but I, I didn't say that. Okay. Um, but I just needed him to know that I was going to take care of him. And I feel like that same message needs to be said to each one of us so many times. I mean, he's four and it's funny, like, you know, to picture him throwing a tantrum and trying to figure out what he's going to do to make it right and fill himself with stuff that's not the best option for him. But what do we do? So many times we try to fix it. So many times we try to grab it and put it in our own hands when all he's saying is, I said I'd take care of you. I'm going to. It might not feel good right now because you don't know. And you want me to tell you exactly how I'm going to do it. And that's just not how it works. But I told you I was going to take care of you. And it might seem chaotic. And the churning might be there. And you don't know how that bill is going to get paid. Or you don't know if you'll ever be able to trust someone again. Or you don't know how that wound is ever going to heal. But he's asking you to just trust him. And I promise you that when you do, you can go through anything. You can go through chaos. You can go through Hurricane Sandy. You can go through brokenness like families are going through all across this country, losing their little ones. You can go through anything when you trust him because he's got you. And if you can't learn how to be held in 2012, I don't care how awesome you think 2013 is going to be because it's not. The only place 
that's safe, the only place where the chaos is calmed is when you're in the palm of his hands. And he's had you the whole time. You just might have been trying to flail around and grab the potato chips, grab the Snickers bar, whatever you could to, to band-aid it to make it better when he's saying the entire time, I've got this and I've got you. And when we can cling to that this morning, he will be the fresh prince of Christmas and the fresh prince of peace. I promise you that. You guys, the fresh prince of Bel Air, does anybody? Okay. Hold on. I can rap for you right now. Are you ready? No. Okay, I won't. I won't. I've already sung enough for you guys today. Um, but he wants to hold you, and he wants to be that peace to you. He wants to be the Prince of Peace. That's what the prophecies told. That's what the hope that we can hold on to is that we don't have to be afraid. Mary didn't have to be afraid. Her life wasn't beautiful, cakewalk. It was hard. I'm sure it was. And I'm sure there's a lot of times she's like, really, me? I know you found favor with me, but why me? I've got this and I've got you. And that's what he's saying to you this morning. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. God, I just thank you that you do have us. And that though there's chaos maybe surrounding us and in the middle of brokenness, in the middle of confusion, God, that you are our Prince of Peace. And whatever we're facing this morning, I just ask right now that you would bring comfort. Your word promises that the Holy Spirit would come and be our comforter, to walk through with us, beside us, so close that we would sense his presence and I sense his peace. So I ask this morning that your presence be real and tangible in this place, in our lives, in the rest of our Christmas week, God, that we would be aware that you've got us. And this morning, if you're here and you're saying, you know what, I have no idea what you're talking about because I literally live in a world of chaos. I live trying to grab the chips off the checkout counter. I live trying to figure it out on myself and I'm just really tired of that. And you want to just surrender that, that ownership of your life you want to get out of the driver's seat and you want this Christmas and your life in 2013 to be a year where peace reigns, not because things are perfect, not because everything's just right, but because he's got you. If that's you this morning, just slip up your hand because I'm just going to say a quick prayer and it's going to be quick. So if you feel like that resonates with you this morning, just slip up your hand really quickly. Anybody? You guys are all good? A few of you? Okay. God, we do trust you. And we give it back to you as many times as we have to do it. We give you back control of our lives. We give you back <clears throat> our trust. And we know that you got this and you got us. And I thank you for your peace fulfilling our hearts this morning. And I thank you for a joyous day, a joyous season, God, and that we would walk forever in the palm of your hand held closely by you. In Jesus' name, amen.